Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you didn't know, I've been editing in Final Cut Pro for over seven years now, but with all of the rumors of Apple ending support for Final Cut Pro and not updating it, I decided to test out DaVinci Resolve. But I didn't think I'd like it as much as I do. Color grading is so much better and just overall easier in Resolve. And I hope that if Apple does decide to update Final Cut, they implement some of those features as well. So let's hop over to my desktop and I will show you DaVinci Resolve. Okay, so when you first load up DaVinci Resolve, this is what it is going to look like. And I think this would be a good time to talk about the price of Resolve. So if you have the free version, because there is a free version of Resolve, it gives you most of the same features that are in the paid version, but obviously the more advanced features are in the paid version. And the paid version is a one-time cost of $3.99. So it's actually the same price as Final Cut Pro. Final Cut has a free trial but there's no dedicated free version that you can have forever so they are similar in pricing so if I go to make a new project I will come over here to new projects and I can name it and then this is what it will look like and this editing window is actually very similar to Final Cut. So if I go to the edit page, you can see up here you have all of your video, uh, audio, transitions, titles, generators, and effects. Down here is your actual timeline. Here is the player. So when you actually play your video, this is where you're gonna see it. And then over here is your inspector. So this layout is actually very similar to Final Cut. And then down here you have your different pages, like the cut, edit, fusion, color, fair light and then deliver so those are all down there and they all do different things so first things first let's import some media so I'm gonna go up to file import media and then I can select whatever I want to import so I will import these two clips and click on open and then I'll just change the frame rate so that uh, these clips match the timeline so then I can come up here to the media pool and I can drag both of the clips in here. So the first thing I always do is color correct um, and color grade because I shoot in S-Log2. So I come over to the color tab and I'll just make a couple modes just cause why not? And then I drag the color space transform onto one of the nodes. And here I can put in all of my settings. So um, I will put Sony S gamut and then S-Log2. And then these two um, down here, the output color space and the output gamma will be Rec 709. And then I can come over here and adjust these further. So I can adjust the lift gamma gain settings just to get this to a place that is gradable. And I think this is now gradable. And usually I save the color grading process until the end. I can just drag an adjustment layer and then make all the changes there. Uh, but now let's start cutting down this A-roll. So that's what a lot of the editing process for these kind of videos is, is cutting down the A-roll. So I will zoom in on the timeline here and then I will go to the first audio waveform and I will cut it right there so that right when the video starts, I am talking. Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. So, and then I can just um, cut out a lot of the dead spaces or ums. So like here, for example, I can cut there and then come over here and then cut. And I don't want any dead space. So I will cut exactly where that audio waveform is. And that's the green um, thing down here with the white spikes. That is the waveform. And then I can just make this smoother by um, choosing the audio drag it down so then i can just drag those out to make sure i'm not cutting anything off that i say um, add a quick fade to both of those by adjusting this and now you have your jump cut welcome back to my channel so if you did and then here i'll just zoom in the clip a little bit just to make that jump cut smoother to my channel so if you didn't know i've been editing in final cut pro for around seven years now. So now let's add some B-roll. When I start talking about the rumors of Final Cut being unsupported, I will just drag in some of this B-roll that I just recorded on my laptop of these web articles or tweets of Final Cut not being supported. So here 
I can yourself. trim to where I start highlighting that text. And now I can add some keyframes. So keyframes are the exact same that they are in Final Cut. You click this up here and then you can go through to where you want your clip to end. And then here I can just zoom this in. You could go down a little more. So now you get this effect. With all the rumors of Apple. And then I can add this other B-roll clip in of this tweet here. Once again, just trim this down to when I want to start. And then I can start keyframing. And then the last thing I can do for this B-roll is come over to the effects and I can just grab a video transition. I like the slide drag it on top here and just trim it down to around four or three frames. And then I can do the same thing here so it exits and just trim it down to four or three frames. And now we have some B-roll in there, uh, but let's continue to cut down this A-roll. I could tell I said um in one of these sentences somewhere. I think this is where I say it. I can cut this clip down and then cut to this second waveform right there. Um, and I like to just cut and then drag it. I know that's not efficient and a lot of people use the ripple cut or whatever it's called. I still need to get used to resolve and cutting down the A-roll. So right now I just drag it, but once I get used to it, start figuring out that ripple cut, whatever it's called a little more, then I can be more efficient. And I'm definitely much more efficient right now in Final Cut because like I said, I've been using it for so many years. I'm just used to it and I've gotten a pretty good workflow down. But but if I use Resolve and keep testing it out and getting better at it, then I will be able to be efficient in Resolve as well. I dropped my phone in the parking lot and I'm making sure it didn't break. It was sitting on my lap and I forgot it was in my lap and I dropped it right on the concrete. But I think all that happened was the case got a little scuffed up. All right, so now that we've been cutting down this A-roll, if you wanna make your jump cut smoother, you can do a J or L cut. And in Resolve, this is a little bit different than how you do it in Final Cut. In Final Cut, you're gonna leave yourself some space on one of your clips, and then you're just gonna expand the audio on both of them and drag the other clip, which Whichever way you want your JRL cut to go. I don't know if I'm explaining that well. I'll put some B-roll up on the screen showing you how to do that. But in Resolve, it's a little bit different. Let's say I do it with this. So I want the JRL cut to happen here. So I'll cut it, not leave myself any room, and then cut again when I start talking. And drag this over. And then what you're gonna do is I like to unlink the clips here. And then what you're gonna do is hold option if you're on a Mac. I don't know what it is if you're on Windows. I think it's control. I'll have text on the screen or something, but I'm gonna hold option because I'm on a Mac and you can see this little icon. Then what you're gonna do is just drag this so I can finish that facial expression or whatever. And then you can see that the audio will start and then the video will still be going and then it'll cut. So a lot of YouTubers have- um, And then I can just zoom this out to make it smoother. So a lot of YouTubers have- uh, And now you can see that's just a much more smooth cut and it looks more natural. Uh, so J cuts and L cuts are definitely something you guys should be using and it's easy in both Final Cut and DaVinci. DaVinci just has a different way of going about it and doing it, but it is easy to do in both programs. So that's a lot of what I do for these videos is just cutting down a roll. And then after that, I will add some B roll, some effects, um, text and all of that. Really quick, I'll just show you the titles. So I like to use the basic uh, title. I forget what that is. Here it is, it's just text. So you can drag it over and then click on it and you have all of your effects right over here in the inspector on the right. So I can make this whatever I want and then you can change the font. So I usually like to go Futura PT. That's not Futura PT. I like to go Futura PT and I'll put it on bold or heavy. And then you can uh, change the tracking and all of those kind of settings here and then the line spacing. So I'll just make these closer together. You can change the color and then the font style um, all of your settings right here. So then I will add a drop shadow because I like to add drop shadows. Um, and you can play with the offset and the blur, opacity, color, all that. You can add strokes. 
So I could add a light stroke. Um, I usually don't. I just think a drop shadow is good enough. Uh, but you can add a stroke, all of that, a background if you want to. And then once you're done and uh, you have your text how you want it, you can add a transition or something, um, like a slide have uh, been switching to and then the text will just slide in um, so all the transitions also work on text and that's basically it that's what I do in resolve a lot of it's cutting down the a roll adding b roll and text and then if I want to shoot vertical videos and edit that I can just make a new timeline click off use project settings go to format and then click use vertical resolution then click create and it brings up a vertical timeline that I can edit TikToks, Reels, and Shorts in. Thank you guys for watching this video. If you want to see more content like this, please let me know in the comments below. Leave a like if you liked it, and I will see you guys in my next video.